Okay, so this, without doubt, is my favorite cut of meat, belly pork, slow roasted, nice crackling on it, perfectly done. There's no piece of meat that beats this. But what I'm gonna to have to do first is I'm gonna pass it to Tom, who's gonna to take the ribs out of it, which we're gonna chuck on a barbecue later, and he's gonna score the skin. Now it's real skills involved in scoring. I think chefs will agree that nobody wants to stand and score pork belly skin, especially as fast as these guys can do it. So just watch and learn. Right, so first of all, I start uh, to peel back the skin here, which releases the, the meat from the bone. And I just sl slowly slide my knife against the ribs as close as I can, so I leave all the meat, which will be fantastic for roasting later. So let's just whip it back like that. So those ribs would be great in a little bit of tomato sauce with a little bit of cayenne, a little bit of smoked paprika, a little bit of honey, but also, this is where your streaky bacon comes from. So this could be cured down to make your streaky bacon. This is, off the lo this is off the bottom side of the loin. So it's off sort of this part of the pig if it was on all fours. And then you head round into the loin, which is where the back bacon and your great roasting joints come from. So, so onto the scoring, I'm gonna stand the, back now. So the most important part about scoring is not going into the meat too deep. So what you wanna do is insert the, the knife gently, check it hasn't gone to the meat, which it hasn't. So I know that bit of the blade is the right amount. Uh, to use to put it into the meat. So it's just quickly just go like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you just score the skin, just keep going. Now there's lots of theories about how to get the best crackling. The Chinese pour boiling water over the skin to tighten the skin up. They say that gives the best crackling. A lot of uh, restaurant chefs in Europe and the UK tend to start the oven off really, really high and get the crackling going and then turn it down to cook it over a longer period of time. I always think that has a risk of burning the crackling before you even begin. So I tend to start mine off exactly the opposite way. I tend to start mine at 160 and cook it for a long period of time and then tend to whack the oven right up as high as it'll go for the last 10 or 15 minutes at the end. That gives the chance for all of that lovely fat to melt through the meat, but also gives you the opportunity to stop the crackling burning and still have great meat underneath. If you do it the other way round and the crackling starts to burn, the meat might not be ready. So if you do it this way, it will work. I promise it'll work. So next thing to do is our oven tray. We need to get our vegetables in there again. So again, this keeps the meat out of the tray. So it stops it sticking, stops it tearing. It gives us a little bit of space. So because you've already cut yourself today, you're not allowed to play with knives anymore. So just split them lengthways. All you're trying to do is give a nice base for them to sit up on the oven tray. See the way that will sit in there now? Yeah. And that'll sit up lovely So again, we don't have to uh, peel the No, it's just cooking. providing the space and a little bit of air space underneath. Now, you can put a little bit of wine or a little bit of liquid around in there. I put a little bit of water in there so any fat dripping into it doesn't burn and fill the kitchen full of smoke. A little tiny amount of water in there won't do it any harm at all and we'll steam the pork from underneath. So, Tom, stick us just half an inch of water in there yep. and then we're gonna stick it straight in the oven. There's all sorts of theories covering it with tin foil, salting it the day before and all that kind of nonsense. You don't need to do any of that. If you're getting the meat from a decent butcher who's aging the meat properly, it's only when it's been stuck in a cellophane or a backpack bag when it's sweating and got all moist and horrible that you need to do these extra things to dry it out. So, in the we, oven. Do we need to add any salt, pepper to it? No, or? we can do all of that at the end. Right, if you yeah. put the salt, if you put the salt and the pepper on there now, it's got a chance of burning and all it's gonna do is keep drying that crackling out. I know we want it to dry out so we get that nice, crunchy, crisp crackling, but it's things we can do at the end rather than the beginning. So, two, two and a bit hours, come back, and we'll see how we've got on. So now this is the time to go back and check on the belly pork again. How long, so how long has it been in there for? It's been in about an hour and 35, hour and 40 minutes. Okay. So it should just be at the stage where that meat's just starting to shred underneath that fat's cooked through. Softening it's starting to soften and now it's time to get it into a really, really hot oven to get that crackling working. Brilliant. So I'm gonna grab it. So we've got our belly pork. If you just have a little smell of that, those leeks and those onions. Now go straight into the centre of the meat, will it? Yeah, it's just steamed up gently. I mean, that stock that's there is taste. Go and get your fingers in there. Come on. Spot on so you get the leeks, you get the yeah, carrot, you get the onion. So a little touch of salt. The belly will go that's, into the bottom of the tray. Yep, and that's what you make your gravy from. 
So half a bottle of cider into there on the yeah. stove top, boil it up, a little bit of corn flour in if you want it a little bit thicker, and just get that in there. These that have been roasted perfectly, if you grab a knife and just slice one of those and try one of them, while well, I stick this into the oven, I've got the oven up to 275 because I want that real blast of heat now to crisp this up. The pork underneath's cooked, so we just want to get that crackling finished. So I'm going to stick this in, try a bit of that carrot. Soft as you like that, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Look at that. Roasted carrot. Dave needs a peanut. <laughs> no, lovely, yeah. Right, 10 minutes, and that crackling will be ready. So, lovely crispy belly pork out of the oven. Yeah. We're just gonna give it a little lift up here. Just take those little bits of veggies off the bottom there. So look at that. Just take that little bit of celery off there. You really see that crack it up fantastic. And that, that high heat you turn it up to. At the it? end, has done that. Look, that's the noise you want. Brilliant. So, we're not gonna waste these either. Look at that, that lovely, that's just melted away, slow roasted carrots and onions. All these bits you should be eating, don't chuck them away. There'll be another one hidden in there somewhere. Look at that, look how soft that is. Okay, Good so awesome. the only bit I wouldn't eat is probably the celery because it's not great once it's being cooked, it's a so bit. The celery, that just gives a bit of flavor. Bit of height, bit of flavor. And then we're into. You can hear that crunch that. Yeah, if it's not making that crunch, we're not gonna mess around too much. We're just gonna do nice, big, fat slabs of our gorgeous belly pork. Look at that. We're not messing around today. And that do, lovely do you need crackling. To rest that or can you eat it? That's been out of the oven for, I suppose, about 10 minutes, I reckon. Right. But you can still see, even after 10 minutes, it's still red hot. We don't have to serve meat red hot. If it's red hot, you go to a restaurant, you get a steak that's red hot, send it back because it's gonna be rubbish. This, on the other hand, is absolutely gorgeous. Crispy belly pork with roasted root vegetables.